African leaders must ensure that the continent is able to meet the deadline for an AIDS-free Africa by 2030. Speaking exclusively to the SABC, Namibia's first lady, Monica Gaingo, says 90% of young people living with HIV are African. She was speaking as the United States and Africa observed 20 years since the president's emergency plan for AIDS relief was launched. This week, a special event took place to celebrate the initiative that was launched by former U.S. President George W. Bush in his State of the Union address back in 2003. So it's an African-led campaign uh, with very powerful African voices, uh, business leaders, uh, political leaders, uh, young people, uh, media personalities. And the idea is that we are seeing not just um, a stabilization, we're actually starting to see HIV infections in young people. Those numbers are starting to go backwards. We're seeing some reversals. And we're calling for political will, yes, but I think it's time for all of us as Africans to get involved in ending pediatric HIV and HIV in young people. Well, what challenges have you identified in terms of uh, perhaps the continent uh, embarking on a powerful campaign to ensure that we don't regress? So there's a number of challenges, uh, but fundamentally, there's, things need to happen at two levels. They need to happen at political level. And right now, the world is a distracted place. There's many problems of a socioeconomic nature. And our idea is really to say political will is important. And there are countries that are showing exceptional political will around the HIV response. But it's also important for us as Africans to start getting involved in some of these campaigns ourselves, because this is not a politically funded campaign. It's, it's Africans from all walks of life who've gotten together to say it's very important for us as Africans to also start leading these type of campaigns and complementing some of the initiatives that are being taken. There's, for instance, a global uh, camp, there's a global alliance um, for ending uh, HIV in children by 2030. And because it's a global alliance, we really support it. We believe in its intent. But Africa Reach is really intended to be Africa specific, Africa focused by Africans. Why did we drop the ball? As you pointed out, that it looks like we are regressing. It's a number of balls uh, that were dropped. Uh, I think the time, the, the, the time that we've been with this HIV campaign has been long. I think people got distracted by new crises. People are still dealing with the aftermath of COVID. There's a Ukraine crisis that is diverting resources. Um, and naturally, even the messaging, uh, people have almost forgotten about the HIV response. So it's it's a number of balls that were dropped and they were dropped at an unfortunate time because it, it, it started to happen at a time where there was significant progress being made. And to see these reversals is heartbreaking because we all know what it means. Africans die and we no longer want Africans to die from things that are preventable. The 2030 target, is it still achievable? It's achievable for some. It's a, it can be achievable for most if we put the right measures in place and if we put the right um, focus areas and political will in place. It is achievable in, in, in short. Well, you spoke about uh, perhaps some of the challenges, global challenges that have affected the campaign. Uh, you talk about the COVID-19 and the war in Ukraine. How do we ensure that we refocus the world, particularly the WHO, to ensure that it does uh, come back and say, let's continue with these important programs that uh, were affected because of the global challenges? That's really the importance of this um Global Alliance Against AIDS that is launched um, and headed by UN AIDS, which we support fully. And that's also why Africa Reach's work is very important in this moment. It's exactly the right time to refocus energy onto the HIV uh, pandemic, particularly in relation to pediatric HIV and young people. It's, it's almost criminal that 90% of young people infected with HIV are on the African continent. So it speaks to, yes, there's global crises that are diverting our attention, but we've had this problem for some time. 
So it, 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 it would be too convenient to blame everything on these uh, multiple crises. It, it really is a matter of really just making sure that we ensure that the gains that we've made in the last 20 years, with the assistance of, of uh, public health policies like PEPFAR, are entrenched and that we go to the last mile and finalize the fight against the HIV, HIV um, response. And it's possible. It's doable. And that's the heartbreaking part. It's, it's, it's a low hanging fruit that we can all ensure its success. To young people on the continent, what is your message? And I'm trying to say this politely, but uh, politics and politicians are there to solve our most complex problems, but they won't be able to solve them on their own. And there are issues that we'll all have to get involved in if we want them to be resolved and to be resolved quickly. We've all run out of time, so it means we all need to have all hands on deck and work on every single issue that we believe to be problematic for young people. And HIV is really one of those issues. Is there a political will? Well, there'll never be collective political will. There's some African countries that are doing exceptional. Uh, Botswana, Namibia is certainly one of those countries. There's a number of African countries where exceptional political will has been shown. So in the majority, yes, but there are some countries naturally where there's concerns. And those countries, there's structural issues that need to be resolved because you'll understand where this distraction comes from. When there's unresolved conflicts, there's unresolved uh, economic and structural issues, that need to be resolved. So yes, I think we the, the political will is there, but now it needs to be translated into saving people's lives and making sure that uh, we reduce new HIV infections, particularly in, uh, in children and young people. And your message to the leaders of this continent in particular? It's about our collective legacies, and this can be done. If, if, if there's one place every single leader can succeed in, it's eliminating HIV and new infections in HIV. And finally, if you were to advise the health care sector on the continent, what would be your advice? Because you won't be able to address this issue unless you have a buy-in of health sector. Do we even have capacity? Do we have enough skills? So the healthcare sector, it's, it's all of that. It's capacity, it's skills, but it's also non-judgmental services, particularly to young people. So the healthcare sector often, the, the challenges that they face is, is funding, it's the capacity, it's infrastructure. Um, it's reliable access to pharmaceuticals, but the healthcare sector understands the problems that we are facing more than anybody else. But from a, from a supply perspective, I think the healthcare sector just needs to make sure it's services that are accessible to people, that are non-discriminatory and non-judgmental. And the pharmaceutical companies must also play their part in terms of assisting countries. They should, they could, but will they be? I think the pharmaceutical companies have shown us who they are during the COVID crisis. This is how they've always been, even during the HIV um, crisis. So I think we should, we should not stop pressurizing pharmaceutical companies to behave responsibly, but I think we should really focus on what we can do with the limited resources that we have. We really on our own here. Yeah. And, and we must ensure that we get it right. And, and really to focus on public health policies that work. PEPFAR being key uh, to an incredible public health policy that has been very successful, only because it really focused on two important things. The first is partnership, both in the country where it originated from, where it was a bipartisan public health policy, but also in the countries in which it operates, where there's co-ownership and where there's uh, partnerships within country as well. So I think that's what we should be focusing on, not relying on pharmaceutical companies. All right, and that conversation led there by Sophie McQuenna, international editor.